What do you think of this trend, starting with the Arab Spring, spreading to countries like Malaysia and Cambodia recently, the opposition parties winning more seats, more younger people coming out on the streets, protesting against the government, you know, what you see in Malaysia recently and in Cambodia now. Do you see a really big change in the political landscape in ASEAN? Well, uh, I, can't, I cannot say anything about Cambodia because I don't know the details. But in Malaysia, we have had elections, already 13 elections since we became independent. And in our elections, it is possible for opposition parties, their candidates to win and even control the states, the state governments, five state governments uh, was uh, won by the opposition. And the central government did not do anything, did not protest, did not have any demonstration. So even today, Penang is under the opposition, Selangor is under the opposition, Kelantan is under the opposition. So if people choose the opposition, that's their right. If they choose us, we are thankful. Mm -hmm. But we, we have tried to deliver to the people what they wanted. They wanted a country that is uh, uh, more rich, more prosperous. And uh, we, we had tr tried to, supply, to prosper the country for the people in Malaysia. So by and large, they're quite happy with uh, the current government. Mm -hmm. uh, although in some states, of course, they are not happy. And as long as the people decide through the ballot that they want the same government to continue, I think it is the right of the people to make that decision. What if the people decide that Anwar Ibrahim should be prime minister? Well, if they decide, we have nothing. We have to accept that this is the, the desire of the people. Do you see that happening in your lifetime? I don't think it's going to happen because this man has got a lot of problems. <laughs> <laughs> have you read a book by your predecessor, Tun Abdullah Badawi, the mm. new book called Awakening, the Abdullah Badawi years in Malaysia? In the book, the former Prime Minister, his predecessor was quite critical of Dr. Mahade about a lot of things. Have you read the book? Or you are too afraid to read it? Uh, I read parts of it. The part you only read the parts that were nice to you? Or? No, no, the parts no. that was critical of me. You have read it? Yes. And? And he says that if he had followed my advice, Malaysia would be bankrupt. Yes, you said that. The, In the, fact, he wrote, this, I'll, I'll read it to you. He said that, if I had given in to the pressure from Dr. Mahade to continue with his pet mega projects, Malaysia would be bankrupt by now. You said that. Yeah. Is it true or not? <laughs> well, if you look at the me so-called mega projects during my time, there are my, so many of them. Mm -hmm. So actually, Malaysia should have been bankrupt during my time. Because I spent so much money building towers, building uh, uh, bridges, twin towers, twin towers, bridge to Penang, sub highway all the all the way from south to north, uh, new airports, uh, new ports. All those things consume a lot of money. Mm -hmm. We should have been bankrupt. If I had stepped down earlier, I'm quite sure that Malaysia will not have Penang Bridge, will not have twin towers, will not have KLIA Airport will not have anything, then of course the government will be very rich because we don't spend money at all. <laughs> <laughs> so you don't think he was telling the truth? No, I think uh, if we were bankrupt, the country would be bankrupt today. I didn't see anything being done. In fact, the country now has even more revenue than during my time. Mm -hmm. uh, the oil revenue in my time was re relatively small, but uh, the country was not bankrupt. It is it's never been downgraded by the international 
uh, grading uh, uh, companies and all that, I keep on telling people, if you keep money, you lose money. Mm -hmm. Because over time, there will be inflation, which means that the value of money will go down. So don't keep money. Please spend money, <laughs> but wisely. <laughs> wisely. But he said that uh, once you are retired, you are retired. You should not interfere with your successor. If there's anything you are unhappy with, you can always offer your views privately. <laughs> Why bring it up in public and make life difficult for him? <laughs> yeah, I think I was the cause of his being rejected as uh, president of the party and lost his uh, prime ministership. I feel that a person should retire and not interfere with uh, the government. Mm -hmm. But when you see the government doing something that is damaging to the country, it is your duty to criticize. And that's what I did, because if I want to talk to him, he doesn't want to listen. He doesn't even want to meet me. <laughs> and he did not allow ministers to talk to me, yes. uh, prevented me from speaking in public, ask people who invited me to, to talk, to withdraw their, their invitation. Mm -hmm. they, so how could I talk? I had to start, start my own blog on the internet. Yeah, and then I put writing that, his own blog, yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And that's how I managed to uh, give my opinion. Mm -hmm. So how would you describe your relationship with Mr. Lee Kuan Yew? Is it your friend or your foe or what? I disagree with his politics, but I regard him as a colleague. I, well, when I saw him in Tokyo recently, mm -hmm. I went up to him to say hello and ask how he's uh, doing because he's not, not so well yes. now. Yes. Mm -hmm. We can have friendship, talk to each other, but we don't have to agree on our policies. Did you send your happy birthday card to him yesterday? <laughs> I didn't. <laughs> you forgot? I forgot? You forgot? Yeah. Did you intend to? No. I occasionally receive some uh, greetings uh, during the Muslim festival from him. Ah, so he sends you yeah. greetings, yeah. but you do not return. But I do, I do. You do I, return I, the not, greetings? Not yesterday. <laughs> so if you meet him here tonight, now, what would you tell him? Say happy birthday. <laughs>